the most sacred of relationships, yet time and life make it fragile. Love, trust, respect and desire, all elements of a successful marriage. Yet so many of us along the way forget. We lead busy lives. We go through changes, big and small. We build walls to protect ourselves. It does not have to be this way. There are clear and exciting ways to bring your marriage and life back on track. Welcome to the Couples Expert Podcast with Stuart Fensterheim. Hello, and welcome to the Couples Expert Podcast. This is Stuart. I love to meet with all of you in all different ways. Some of you send me emails, the others go on my Facebook page, and others yet follow me in Twitter and in other social media outlets. This exciting time in our world where social media is out and about and we're meeting people there for all different reasons. The power of the internet is really wonderful. However, there are some problems with it as well. And what we're gonna be talking about today is how social media can potentially destroy your marriage if you're not careful. You know, one of the criticisms with President Trump has been all his tweets. And what I would like to tell you is that although Twitter can be a powerful mechanism for communication, it also could be a mechanism for disaster. And I think some of the times when President Trump has tweeted, it has created real problems for lots of folks And what I want to make sure that all of you understand is if you're following people, there are people who are following you as well, especially on things like Twitter, Instagram, and other mechanisms like that. And what we're going to be talking about today is really how to let social media be an asset and not a detriment to your relationship. So let's talk about Facebook first. It's been a decade now since the start of Facebook, and we're now able to look back and really see some of the impact of this unprecedented experience that has the world just exploding. The impact of 2.7 billion, now I want you to hear this, 2.7 billion Facebook users worldwide, chances You're one of them, and your partner is too. And later in this episode, we're going to talk about how Facebook could potentially cause your next divorce. Instagram, for example, has 600 million users. That's a lot of people taking cell phone photos and posting them, not to mention subscribing and browsing all those millions of photographs. So someone out there is seeing your photograph. Streaming service with sports, movies, are taking sports fan, which largely are male, but I think that's changing, it's also female now, are spending more time watching their favorite teams. Fantasy football leagues, and all the games and all these streaming devices that people watch at home. There's also a new term that's been introduced recently into our social media society, which is called binge watching, where you take an entire season of a TV show and all the movies and sequels together and watch them from beginning to end of a weekend or a series of days. I have to admit, I did that. My assistant, Lisa, introduced me to Game of Thrones, and I spent probably an entire week watching eight seasons of Game of Thrones, and my wife would tell you that for that period of time, she was close to a Game of Thrones widow. And some of you know what I mean by that. Now, what are the demographics on these social media sites? What we found when I did the research is that there are 13% of Facebook users are in the 25 to 34 age group. Men and women both use the service And there was about 2% more women than men in the age group of 55 on up. One of the reasons I'm talking about this 
is that I have been appalled by some of what I've seen recently. When it comes to things like technology and cell phone use, I see couples sitting in the same home texting each other. I see people, an entire family, sitting in restaurants and having each person doing their own social media site and never interacting with each other. It's an entire family. I had this image of this one family I saw when the last time my wife and I were in a restaurant of a family of seven people, a mother, a father, and five children. Every single one, including the parents, were on Facebook. And I actually looked at my watch. It was about 10 minutes before anyone said anything verbally to one another. How horrible is that? The important thing is where is your focus going? Who's getting your attention? Or maybe I should say, what's getting your attention? Are you even aware of what's going on around you? For those of us who've lived lives before Facebook, it's really interesting to note that none of us felt like we had hours to spend on worthless time sucking activities like watching videos. Facebook, I believe, was designed to be addictive, and it certainly has lived up to it. Stop and think about this. What's the longest time that you can go without checking your Facebook page? When did social media become more important than real life? You can sort of see why it can destroy relationships. If we spend all our time shopping, watching sports, or on Facebook, when do we have time to interact and be vulnerable? When your wife spends all her time shopping and playing on Facebook and Instagram, what's the emotional connection? I get these requests all the time of people wanting me to play this game on Facebook. I have yet to do it, but I'm amazed how many people, including people I've never really met, are reaching out to me to ask me to play a game with them. Why would I play a game with you? I don't know you. We need to play games and interact and talk with those people in our life so we're living a real life full of connection and love and togetherness. As a couple, how do you feel a close connection if you're not talking? If you're not working on the relationship, how do you expect it to stay healthy or evolve or for you to grow? So that when disconnect happens, you're surprised. You come to my office and you say, Stuart, I don't know how it happened. One day we were in love and the next day, I didn't even know who my partner was. And I said, when's the last time you had a conversation with them? And most people can't tell you that. I was listening to a Bonnie Raitt song the other day, and the line goes something like, how the hell do you come home after a full days of work and have nothing to say to me? We don't talk anymore. We're so involved with the technology and computers and texting and Facebook and Pinterest and all these things that you don't even reach out to your wife or husband. What social media has become, in my opinion, is a time-sucking vampire, making it easier for two people to get disconnected and disengaged. And what you'll see when I move on a bit, it also makes it easier to cheat on your husband or cheat on your wife. You can have private conversations when your partner or your husband is sitting next to you. I have a, a person I've been seeing for a while, and I recall his shock when he learned that his partner was doing things with someone sexually that he didn't know about. And they spent a lot of time together. But how he figured this out so one day he picked up her iPad 
And when he did that, he saw a litany of history on the internet that led him to their Facebook page, an instant message on Facebook, and all the things there. And he was able to track the conversation and found out that she was having an affair. It devastated him. This happens all the time today. I see this countless times in my office. People whose lives are now shattered because of social media and not being aware the impact that it can have on you. Social media has truly changed the way we meet and interact with one another. And what it does is it provides this platform to learn more about people that you associate with. The term that a lot of people use is stalking someone on Facebook. And what happens with the stalking is sometimes you then begin to interact with those people. And when it becomes romantic and you begin to share things that need to stay within the context of your own relationship, infidelity, marital problems, and potentially a divorce can occur. People spend way too much time on Facebook. It's not only what a person does on social media, but also how much time they spend that can create conflict. I recall another couple in my office, the conflict that they had was around their sexual relationship. And what ended up happening is there was a discussion regarding what was he doing behind closed doors. He said that he was on the internet. She wasn't sure what that meant. Does that mean he was doing work on the internet? Does that mean he was connecting with someone inappropriately on the internet? Was he going to Ashley Madison on the internet? Or No, he said, no, I'm just checking my Facebook page to see who's following and liking me. Their sex life was almost never happening because more times than not, what would occur is she'd go to bed. He said, I'm just going to check my Facebook for a bit. She'd fall asleep and he'd be there till two or three in the morning having a sexting relationship with someone that he met on Facebook. What we have found is that 20% of an increase in Facebook enrollment, and this was associated with a 2.18% to a 4.32% increase in divorce rates. This comes from a study that I noticed. What also happens with social media is it provides an opportunity for snooping. I was talking about how we are stalking people here. And sometimes what ends up happening is the wife or husband or partner decides that their partner is doing something inappropriate and they begin to track their use of the internet. Think about what that says to a partner, whether it's happening or even if more often it's not happening. And what occurs there then is people having a lack of trust and feeling that they need to really scrutinize their partner's behavior. We've never had to deal with that challenge before. And sometimes just the fact that you think it's going on contributes to this negative image that you have about your partner that locks in sometimes. And when I talk about negative cycles, as I have before, part of the cycle is your interpretation of who your partner is. And if you don't know whether your partner is doing something inappropriate, the feeling that you tend to get is, I can't trust this person. And as a result of that, you don't open up. You're not vulnerable. You're not authentic. And what ends up happening here is it leads to a high risk for infidelity, both because then you end up with a very disentangled, disengaged relationship where people don't trust one another, they pull away, and they feel very much alone. And then you're a prime target for having an internet affair if you're spending all your time doing that. 
And there are so many now smartphone apps, social media apps, that make it easier to look for a new relationship if you want. There's a whopping 30% of people on Tinder, and this comes from another study, that are married. And sites that I mentioned a moment ago of Ashley Madison cater to people who are married looking to have an affair. The good news with this, though, is social media also has allowed us to connect with people on an intimate level in ways that we'd never meet. Part of how I find guests for this podcast, for example, is by searching Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and LinkedIn and all different places. And I post statements that I'm looking for guests for my podcast to help all of you have a close, connected relationship. I wouldn't have made some of the friends that I've made by reaching out to someone and saying, come help my audience. And people are more than willing to do that, and I love them for it. So there is a positive aspect of all of this. But there also is a caution here. Because the impact of social media use on relationships can be disastrous. What's also happening, which is sort of interesting, is people are starting to be much more aware of this. And what they're doing is they're developing social media guidelines in their wedding vows. They may not be public wedding vows that we say in a wedding, but the conversations that people are having are about what would we agree is a appropriate amount of time to go on Facebook? What is appropriate, acceptable online behavior? Is it okay to look up someone I used to be in a relationship with? What kind of information am I allowed to share? About a year ago, I did a whole series on infidelities and emotional affairs, which are the most tragic for most people. And one of the things that we learned from that dialogue is that emotional affairs tend to happen without anyone knowing it's going on. You don't seek it out. You connect with someone, you begin to share, and before you know it, you're head over heels in a, an emotional, connected relationship with someone other than your spouse. And it usually just starts with just sharing some basic things. All of us need to have conversations with our partners about what is it okay to share outside of the relationship. I also encourage you to do that, not just having to do with social media, but also just having to do with the two of you and your relationship with friends and colleagues and things like that. So here's some suggestions. I wanna give you some advice that you could take home today, have a dialogue with your partner, and really begin to reach out and be able to say, these are the things that we're going to do to keep our relationship alive, to keep us connected, to not allow social media to get in the way of our marriage. One of the first ones is everything has to be out in the open. If you don't have a joint account with your partner created today, let both of you use the same account. Don't have private Facebook accounts. It opens up for problems. And if you have a joint account, the two of you can share together all the pictures that you have. It's an exciting thing to have happen. And both of you can have that same exact account with one another. I'm pretty sure that Facebook allows this. To be honest, I guess I'm... Not 100% sure about that, and maybe someone can write to me and let me know if that's possible. But I would recommend joint husband and wife accounts on Facebook. The second is, say what you need to say and say it to the right person. Meaning, don't gripe about your marriage on social media. If you have a problem with your partner, don't let them find out about it 
on your Facebook page. There are horrible, horrible breakups when someone blocks someone from their social media account. And I see this happening a lot. People actually block their husband or block their wives. And what that suggests to the partner is a disregard to who you are as a person. And it's basically like the silent treatment, but it's worse than that. If you think something you say might hurt somebody, someone you love, don't say it. One of the things that I have told my children time and time again, and I think I want to keep you, don't forget what you put online stays forever. Once it's there, it's there. Yes, sometimes you can delete it. But once it's out there, the world has seen it. And when that happens, I have another couple I was going to tell you about. Another couple, basically what happened is the husband posted something negative about the wife, and she got a call not from him, but from an old friend of hers that she hadn't seen in a long time saying, did you know that your husband just dissed you online? And she was devastated. She didn't know anything about it. And he refused to talk about it with her. And the two of them ended up in my office, partly due to that problem on Facebook. So their marital problems, and he was a high-profile person. That person was outed on Facebook for the world to see. And it actually impacted both his notoriety, his business, in many, many different ways. What social media is best used for in a marriage is building each other up. Have your posts be ones that say, I am so in love with my wife, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Not, I can't believe my wife made us late to our professional meeting. That's not what Facebook is designed for. That's not what social media is for. Please build each other up. And when you do that, it can create such a positive perspective that both of you will have one another. Remember something. The value that you have of your relationship is equal to the time and energy that you invest in it. If you're not investing the same amount of time and energy in your marriage as you are on your Facebook friends, shame on you. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are good places if you use them correctly. Don't let it suck you away from putting that kind of commitment that you have in building your likes as building the love up in your life. The solutions to this are not easy, but are pretty obvious. They're not always easy to implement, though. Both partners have to realize the impact that social media is having on their lives and their relationship and be willing to make some changes. You have to be willing to let your relationship and time with your partner replace social media in your nighttime and daytime interactions. This has to be a conscious effort by both partners. And I would even suggest that you schedule your free time on a calendar so that both of you have the same time frames blocked out for couple time. If you do this, you'll be amazed at how many hours you've been spending on social media without realizing it because what you should do is both track social media time and time that you spend working on your relationship. Plan for your couple's time to be something you both like to do. Go out together and make it all about the two of you connecting. Speak attachment language. Speak about the things that both of you are doing to really send the message that you care about one another. Put your phones on silent if you have to carry them and challenge yourself not to even look at it. Schedule your sexuality. Yes, I just said that. Make one of your plans be time for the two of you to work on the physical aspect of your relationship. 
If you have that on your calendar, you can spend time teasing and anticipating being together, and that'll make it even more fun. So which is more fun? Going on Facebook or getting laid? I'd say having sex with your partner would be a lot more fun than getting a like. This next one is a tough one. Unsubscribe yourself from at least two of the services that you have on social media. I promise it won't kill you. You may be so busy being with your partner that you'll not even miss him. Begin to wean yourself off these social media sites so that you can spend time together doing other things. For some people, this is truly a psychological addiction. If you can't go cold turkey, then begin to come back on the time you spend. But make sure, as with other addictions, that you don't replace one with another. Instead, fill your time with worthwhile pursuits and include working on your relationship with the people in your life. When you've learned to live without these two services, unsubscribe from another one. Block times out in your day and in your weekend to shut off and unplug. That means both of you take time off from social media. Think of it as a fast. As a Jewish man, once a year we have Yom Kippur. And what we do is we fast to remember the pain and anguish of our sins. Think of this fast as an acknowledgement of the addiction that you had that you're now correcting. If you and your partner are both home on the weekends, you can compromise with watching a sporting event or a movie together then turning off the big screen and heading outside. Or you do an hour on Facebook or chatting with friends together. Then turn off your notifications for four hours or the rest of the day. If you have children, you can limit screen time for yourself at the same time you're limiting it for them. If you can tell your kids that they can't be on the devices, you shouldn't be either. This should be family time that you can play board games, go out to the park, and do things as a family unit. You'll have the kids' undivided attention. You'll be surprised at the conversations that you and your partner are going to have when you don't have the internet or social media in the way. I want to thank you all for paying attention to this really important podcast because I really do believe social media, although having lots of positive effects have more detrimental effects if we don't manage it if we let social media manage us social media will always win our relationships will lose but if you manage it your relationship prospers you have a worldwide internet to look up things to benefit the two of you to have social media interactions as a couple with social media couples friends and with that note i wish you well and i sign off saying we'll see you next week take care communicate stay connected and email me any questions or comments at podcast at the couples experts.com so long now Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 